Hey there, Smurfs and Smurfettes. <laughs> um, just had a buddy a minute ago wanted me to continue on this little bitty sound system deal. Um, only thing I'm going over on this one is impedance or homage, ohms, um, on some speakers that he's running, which are speakers that are rated at 16 ohms per cabinet, um, which is... Um, not too many are that way. Um, of course, with guitar cabinets and stuff, that's a different thing. Uh, the real uh, England-made Marshall cabinets are 16 ohms and so forth. But as far as PA stuff goes, um, there's not hardly anything left um, that's current that run that way, except for a company that uh, Fender bought up. So this will be Fender stuff from a long time ago and Fender bought Sun S-U-N-N -N, and made the exact same cabinets that were also 16 ohms okay so let's show you what that boils down to my friend and um, this will answer all the homage things for a lot of you so anyway I drug out the uh, same old little Crappinger Behringer a uh, little PA head that I showed you guys on a video recently. Um, this here is like the last powered mixer that they actually had the correct wattage written down, which is your RMS wattage. Everything now, even the um, newest Behringer powered mixer I got, which is almost just like this, um, has the wrong wattage on it. They're using um, program wattage and some of their other stuff is using peak wattage okay so you got to make sure it's the RMS rating okay so if you see anything that says peak um, don't go by it uh, if you see anything that says program don't go by it if you see anything like this and that's kind of like where it stops then you're okay if you see a little tiny power um, mixer <laughs> excuse me little mixer head that looks like this and it says 1600 watts like my other one does in there um, <laughs> not in a million years okay it'll be 400 watts you're like what yeah if you get back here and it says um, 1600 watts that would be um, peak power now it's supposed to mean that you have 1600 watts that something could do, something could make a noise that actually took up 1,600 watts one time and it should not blow up the head. Do it two times, especially in a row like a kick drum, for sure <laughs> you're going to fry this thing and probably all the speakers and horns connected to it. So a 1,600 watt peak power you cut that in half, so now you have 800 watts. That would be your program power. None of this makes any difference unless you're just trying to find out what the true power is. So again, 1600 watts peak, cut it in half. 800 watts, that will be your program power, which still means nothing to you. Now do it again, go to the program power, which is 800 watts cut that in half that will be 400 watts okay so that means you're getting 400 watts RMS and that's the only one you want to worry about so if you have 400 watts you know that's going into two speaker cabinets one per side you got 400 watts RMS that can come out um, here and here into PA cabinets the handle whatever so you're sending 400 watts to that one 400 watts to that one so you get two that are jumped off each other meaning two speakers like up here you're sending one speaker cable out of a 400 watt RMS thing up into one speaker and then jumping it into the next speaker so that's 400 watts but you're only getting 200 watts going to each cabinet you just split up the power now how is that um, it can work a couple different ways, and I'll show you how. Okay. 
and if you were to um, do uh, the way way you could do that is because that's an 8 ohm cabinet there that's an 8 ohm cabinet okay that's what they say on the back 8 ohms so if you take an 8 ohm and an 8 ohm put them together again you chop it in half um, so now you have an entire load of 4 ohms okay so now you gotta come back here and find the 4 ohm rating and that's what we'll be going up here and then split in half amongst those two cabinets. Four ohms will always be a higher number, more wattage, but see, like here it says 225 watts had eight ohms. So you could put 225 watts into one of those eight ohm speakers, okay, into just one, okay. Now if you hook two of those together, it brings it down to 4 ohms, and you get 350 watts is what it'll put out, okay? But instead of 225 watts coming out up here, now you have 350 watts between the two, right? And what's going to happen is you take this, and you have um, 175 watts, which is 350. 175 watts per cabinet. Okay, so instead of 225 watts in one 8 ohm cabinet, now you have 175 watts per cabinet. So it's less than this. Okay, but there is a perceived volume where you end up with the thing that you are now moving more air which is a good thing okay so even though you have less wattage to even work with so 175 watts and 175 watts instead of 225 through one speaker um, you're actually moving more air by doing this so it will basically still be, be perceived as having that you know 200 and some watts coming out okay because the more air you move um, the better <laughs> okay um, that's what subs are for moving air the more air you can just get to move okay that's the only way sound works you have to move air sound is very slow <laughs> it doesn't take you very long to start walking away from your PA system like out front of it and trying to sing or something or somebody trying to play walking away until everything is out of sync because sound is stupidly slow okay it's like trying to throw a frisbee at the house on the other side of that house that's about how slow sound is you hit a note then that note finally hits that other house <laughs> it's that slow okay so the gentleman that asked me uh, to do this video um, again I'm doing it for everybody so everybody hang on the gentleman that asked me said he had 16 ohm cabinets again uh, pretty rare unless he has some really old cabinets again usually by Fender or Sun uh, sometimes the old custom cabinets have it these are the ones they're phasing out right now but he said he had 10 inch with horns and that's what these are okay so he didn't tell me what the um, power rating was but I'll teach you a few different things here real quick so if you come out of here and it says instead which you do not see here 16 ohms up here and what the power is It'll be like a hundred and hundred and fifty or something. Hundred and fifty watts at sixteen ohms. Well what you're gonna to want to do is get um, more power out of it by hooking some together. And the most of those you can hook together because you never want to go to four ohms, you know, lower than four ohms. You'll see um, four ohms minimum load. Okay. This here's a bridge rating, by the way. You're looking at this 800 watts. Um, 
That means when you take all the power amps in here and put them together, you can only put 800 watts into one speaker. And then you can't hook anything else up to this, period. Okay? So it just becomes an 800 watt power amp. You turn it to, there's a switch on the front that says bridge. And then you can only put one speaker output to here. And it will give you 800 watts to one speaker. You're going to get a lot more coverage doing this stuff and having a lot more speakers than you would with one speaker just doing that. Okay, again, you're moving more air. And that's the key to it. Okay, so if you have 16 ohm cabinets, again, it's a lot of half stuff. So 16, 16, 16, 16 ohms, okay, you could actually run all four of them off of um, one side of the thing over here. And then you could run four more of these off the other side. So yeah, you could have four speakers all on one side of the PA or stack them up so you have four of them and then put four more over there and be running fine and dandy and not overheat anything. So you have 16 ohms and another 16 ohms. Okay, it's all backward sounding, but that would give you 8 ohms. Okay, so you go down here and you see, okay, 8 ohms. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get what? 225 watts to these 8 ohms because they're two 16 ohm speakers. So, um, that's a good amount of power going to those. Okay, and I'll show you a lot more here in a second. So that's 8 ohms total for two 16 ohm cabinets. Now we have two more 16 ohm cabinets. And of course, if you take 8 from this one, I'm sorry, 16 ohms here, 16 ohms here, you just half them and it becomes 8 ohms again. Now, talking from earlier, um, when we had these supposedly at yeah, 8 ohms a piece, so 8 and 8 equals 4 ohms. You're like, don't confuse me, and you got 350 watts going into 4 ohms. Okay, but that's only this side receives that much, and this side receives that much, and that's all you get. Two little speakers on each side. But now that we're using four speakers per side, because we have a 16 and a 16, breaks it down to 8 ohms. 16 and 16 ohms breaks it down to 8 ohms. So using the same theory, this is basically one speaker now. 8 ohms, 8 ohms. So you take an 8 and an 8, just like before. That breaks it down to 4 ohms. Okay, that's the whole thing. You get four ohms, you don't want to go less than that. But you have four speakers moving a whole lot more air than just one speaker. Okay? So that's a really good thing. So we have four ohms with four speakers, but you only get 350 watts to all those speakers. Okay, so it's a matter of what your speakers can actually handle. Okay? These speakers are actually on the back. It says what the wattage is, but it has it listed wrong. Almost like all the speakers do. Uh, almost all the equipment out now. It makes it horrible for you guys. Because it wasn't this way back in the olden days. But now they just try to screw you by saying, yeah, that'll do 1,600 watts. Uh, not on its best day. <laughs> and almost every company does it. So... Anyway, so yeah, that's what you get, my friend, who asked for the video. You get four 16-ohm cabinets per side. Okay, so you can run 16 ohms off the left side. Then you can run four more 16-ohm speakers on this side. Now, as I had showed you the other day, this will... It's the, it'll be the video right before this one, I think. Should be. Um... If you go to my channel, when I'm talking all about this one. So if you have this entire thing split up into 
mains and monitor so you use one power amp because it does have two power amps in it. You can use one side of it for your main speakers like these and you can use the other side for monitors which these actually are little monitors to put in front of you that happen to fit on these. I'll tell you about those little T things here in a second. They're great to have. Best thing in the world to have. But a lot of people will charge you a lot of money and I know where to get them where they won't. Because everybody can rip you off for these things. Okay, so now if we use mains and monitors with these 16 ohm cabinets, this here shows you your mains if you're in mono. And this side over here would be used as monitors. Okay, so you can, with the 16 ohm cabinets, run four total on your mains. So that means two of those speakers on the left side of the stage pointing out toward your audience and just jump it over there with another speaker cord to the other two and plug into those. So that gives you two speakers on each side if they're 16 ohm speakers. Okay, now when you're using speaker cords, um, they will kind of basically resemble on the inside if you open them up uh, lamp cables. They have uh, shielding around both of them. Guitar cords only have shielding around one and then the guitar um, other part of the cable, the negative side of it is just this winding of silver or copper mesh around it. So you want the ones that are definitely um, coated, let's say, shielded around both of the terminals in there, the negative and the positive. Uh, you do not want to go with skinny lamp cord. You will lose a lot of power. So you want to go with what is like um, 12 gauge cable at the minimum up to 10 gauge if you're using very high output stuff. You know, if you're using 8,000 watts per cabinet and go to the 10 gauge but everything else I would go with 12 gauge speaker cords which they're actually called cables not cords but that's what I go with so you actually get all your power over there because it's like sucking a basketball through a garden hose if you're using 14 or 16 gauge speaker wires you know they're just <laughs> it's really backing up it's going to overheat this unit it's not going to get the power to your speakers that you need, so it's really going to make a mess of what you are creating. You're going to be backing this up like a toilet with a big old turd in it. And this will be just sitting up here waiting for you to flush, but even if you do flush, it's not going to quite get there. It's going to be stuck in the middle of that hose on your cables. Yeah, thanks for the visual, Dr. Groovy. Okay, so yeah, use the right size speaker cables, even when jumping from here to here. Um, a one and a half or two foot cable use the same size okay always whatever you're using for the long run use for the short run and don't use any longer speaker cables than you need okay you don't want to run a 50 foot to that one and then another 50 foot between these two um, you're kind of starting to do the turd back and up thing okay but when you do use all four speakers out of one side of a PA or power amp, you run it from here into here. Then you run it all the way across the front of the stage or back of the stage. Better across the front because it takes less speaker wire to get over there. Then you run it into here and then into here. So it's just one big long daisy chain and 16 ohm cabinets are the only ones that you can run four speakers with. Now all of this is going to be exactly the same for your monitors. You can use four monitors if they are 16 ohms. Everything is identical. Okay? Because this monitor board only has one monitor mix that you can use. Um, which sucks if you have two 8 ohm cabinets because only two people are going to be able to basically hear it. And if you have four people in your band it'll be nice that everybody gets to hear a monitor okay so that's the way the 16 ohm stuff comes out okay so hopefully that helps there I'll show you what's wrong with what's going on here 
so you'll understand. Uh, this here's a cool way for surround sound because you can grab these and just turn it. Hey! No, but it is cool that if you are playing somewhere um, and you got people eating directly in front of you or what have you, the dance floor right here, and then you can just take one of these speakers and turn it over this way to where the audience, you know, some more people are sitting down eating. But when they're all up dancing and everything, you can just boing and they're all facing out towards the dance floor. Or if you ever need to, you're playing outside and you need to take one of the speakers and kind of point it kind of behind you so those people can hear back in the park. You can do that. It's amazing. It's just something beautiful. These are the on stage stands. It's just a little T bar is what they call it. Okay, so here's your part number. Okay, you can even go on uh, walmart.com and put on stage stands and it will come up through um, all the different people who offer them. That's why I always go to buy these because I get them for like 12 bucks each. Other people will sell them for 50 bucks each. Okay, so you could still check um, all the places like eBay and stuff, but generally Walmart will show you places um, that have them all at different prices, but 12 bucks is what I pay for those. Okay, the thing I told you was going to suck about these on the back as I spin it around. Again, these are floor monitors, which doesn't matter. Um, so this isn't going to do me anything at all. I'm going to put you down over here and take a monitor off because the actual ratings of everything are on the top. Now these only have the little quarter inch jacks in them, which I'm sure what yours have in them. Okay, these goofy things. Here's where everything's wrong. All oh, this, see, there's that. Um, if you have something that says in and out, they're the same. It don't matter if you go to the in or the out. They are what called parallel. Some of your stuff might just say parallel. It means you can use either one and use either one to jump over to there to either one, <laughs> either jack. Okay, this information is wrong. Okay, it says 8 ohms, 75 watts, RMS. RMS is what you want to see. And the 175 watts peak is incorrect. Um, not that you want to know this, but it would actually be a 150 watts program and then 300 watts peak. Okay, remember I told you, so if you got 300 watts peak, okay, so that's the letter P. You never want to use anything that has a letter P. So if it's 300 watts peak, which most people will um, advertise nowadays just because it's a bigger number and you're supposed to believe it. 300 watts um, peak, cut it in half, be 150 watts program. So, custom drop the ball here. And half of the program, 150 watts, will be 75 watts RMA. Okay, I just want to show you what is very common and where you will get ripped off. Uh, this is eBay, of course. And pretty much every company in the world will rip you off if you don't know exactly what you're doing and if you don't follow exactly what I told you. Uh, this is brand new PV stuff. PV didn't used to do this, but now they're as bad as everybody because uh, Mr. Hartley PV has his son-in-law doing everything, which is why they fell through. Okay, here's their big piece of crap. <laughs> Never use a 215 with a horn for anything, ever. Um, Okay, anyway, so they're advertising that speaker cabinet as 1,400 watts. Now, any person who doesn't know anything about sound at all is going to say, holy cow, that's some major power. Okay, how much, how many watts is this 1,400 watt cabinet now that you've learned? Okay, you take it down to half of that, 750 watts. I'm sorry, 700 watts um, program. And then so it's going to be all the way down to 350 watts. So instead of 1,400 watts, that's your peak. Half of that, 
700 program and 350 watts. That's what it really is, RMS. They don't even bother to show the RMS ratings, as most won't. And look out for this. Okay, so here's what you get. Your 1400 watt PA system. Okay, again, right there, 1400 watts. Okay, they're going to give you 1400 watts peak. Just like I told you, divide that in half. 700 watts program neither one mean a damn thing cut that in half it's 350 watts rms that's what you actually use where does it tell you that nowhere in the entire ad so this 1400 watt speaker is a 350 watt speaker okay and also use your head when you see that it's 299 dollars <laughs> for you to find a 1,400 watt speaker that is of any quality, um, you're going to shell out quite a few grand. Okay? So, that kind of proves that. So, don't let this stuff fool you. Yes. Okay, so, here's what this comes down to is, in real life, this is 8 ohms. That one is 8 ohms. So, that brings it down to 4 ohms. So, we can combine the wattage, the RMS which will bring 75 and 75, it will be actually a 150 watts RMS that these can handle. Okay, 150 watts. Now let's see how that matches up. Okay, again, these readings on here are per side in stereo. So 150 watts at 4 ohms, since we're running that one and this one. So at 4 ohms, for just those two cabinets, it gives us 350 watts of 4 ohms. Is that a bad thing? No, that's a perfect thing, actually. That's what you would want to use. You're like, wow, that would blow them up if there's only 150 watts that it can handle. No, you actually want to use close to double or double of what the speakers can handle. And you base that basically on the whole concept of if you get into your a little pinto car you know so you got your stock crap radio you turn it up halfway anything beyond that is just a distorted horrible mess that's why we all get kick-ass stereos and audio equipment for bands and everything works the same way you want to give it way more power than the speakers can handle and then cut that power back so it's called clean headroom so that if you do turn it up halfway that will be what these can handle but it will be totally clean no distortion okay so that's what you're getting after you're trying to give it double the power that it will handle but not turn it up that high but it will just be totally clean so that's why you're doubling the power you're sending through there so you're putting a great big garden hose up there and just turning the water up to half because it so it just flows clean 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 no strain on anything this does not get even slightly warm because you are running it correctly okay so that's why it goes out to that so if you have a thousand watt worth of speakers you want to run two thousand watts of power to it and then you'll just be running it at half of that uh, volume that it's capable of and it will be totally clean totally safe and just the best sounding that you can possibly make these sound and it's called efficiency your PA will be as efficient as possible so if you're doing the 16 ohm things 16 16 that's 8 ohms 16 16 8 ohms okay so now 8 and 8 down to 4 ohms total with 4 16 ohm cabinets you're still down to 4 ohms okay and you still have the same 350 watts but now we have 150 150 that's 300 watts that all these speakers can handle with 1600 I'm sorry 16 ohm cabinets so all of that can handle 
300 watts RMS. So you want to give them 600 watts RMS. Otherwise, they're going to sound really bad if you underfeed them. You go down here 4 ohms again. I have 350 watts RMS and those handle 300 watts RMS. Well, that's going to give you the car radio thing and it's really going to sound like crap. You won't be able to turn them up very much and then they're going to distort and you're going to blow them. They're going to sound like crap. It's um, actually sending distorted signal through the power amp and then distorted signal being amplified going into your speakers and that just totally overheats their power amps and then you're sending distorted sound amplified up to these and you're going to blow those too so you need 600 watts RMS into a 4 ohm load which you don't have here what's that mean? you need a bigger power amp and that's simply what that means so you, that's what you have to do okay and that would do it so 600 watts RMS is what you need for four 16 ohm cabinets that are rated at 75 watts RMS each again if you ever see anything that says peak or program you know the thing now do not pay attention to them except for if they have no other numbers on here for you again this one's wrong that should be 300 watts peak 150 program then 75 watts RMS so again in today's uh, world where they try to uh, try to deceive you on everything and say that it says a thousand watts peak and says nothing else at all you take that thousand watts peak cut it in half 500 watts um, program cut it in half again 250 watts RMS is what it will really be not that thousand watts that it says in six foot letters on the front of the box okay it's only 250 watts so it's always one fourth of what the peak is it's just easy for me to cut it in half and cut it in half again because they will always give you that peak number don't fall for it so I hope that helps you all out and helps you understand a whole bunch of things so again my friend if you have eight 16 ohm cabinets you can run four of them for your mains but you better have um, whatever your combined wattage is double the power to put into them and same with your monitors if you're running four of them off of one side of this or off of any external power amp which you can run you still need double the power of what these say they will handle RMS and again if they only say peak and they say 300 peak half of that's 150 and then that's program half of that is 75 watts RMS so you will need 600 watts RMS to feed the 300 watts RMS that they will actually handle and then um, you can get up to a little you know halfway up maybe even a little more on your whole system and that usually you would run your main volume up at about seven there will be a place for you but generally it's around seven out of ten and then start bringing up your channel faders from there but that's basically what's called unity gain for your master out so that will keep you from um, overloading the power to these things okay and then don't put your master volumes on, I'm not sorry not your master volumes but your channel volumes um, past half that'll keep you safe but it'll be very as powerful as your system can get and it will be totally clean so that when the whole band plays and four people are all singing at the same time everything will be safe that will be running cool and everything will be sounding as good as humanly possible with the system you have okay that's it uh be super groovy i know i repeat everything a bunch of times but sometimes people need that and that's one of the reasons why i do it the other reason is because i just can't help myself and i love the sound of my own voice we all knew that already correct correct okay so be groovy i'm gonna 
tote this stuff away now. <laughs> Bye.